Welcome to the channel to Irrational. I'm Pranay Sharma and in this video we are going to discuss important questions from past papers of 2019 to 2023 CM1 paper A conducted by IFOA Institute. We are going to see certain questions that were slightly different from a typical type of a question from our course. There are changes in certain type of questions because now we are writing online paper. There are changes in the way we solve certain questions because now we can use Excel during our paper A as well. And certain questions where we might have missed slight details and got the questions wrong. So my aim here is to point out the change in the pattern of the questions and the way you should be solving it. I have divided this video in two parts. This is the first part and the link for the second part would be left in the description and at the end of this video. Please check that out too. Now let's get started. So the questions included here are slightly different from a normal question. Most of the question in your examination are going to be very straightforward that are more or less similar to what we have seen before. But sometimes some questions might have slight trick that you will have to figure out during the examination and also you will have to be very quick. So we'll go through such questions that were asked from 2019 and later. So the first question we are going to see is April 2019 question number six. The one thing you should remember is 2019 papers were offline papers. That means they were written on paper. So there might be some elements in the question that might not be asked in our online examination. Like in this question, we have draw a transition state model. Now they would not be asking you to draw any kind of diagram. They might ask you, they might give you a diagram where they might not label these and just ask you to label them. They might just give you A, B, C, D, E, F and just ask you what is A, B, C, D, E, F and label it properly. So let's see what is different in this question. So we have a life insurance company issues a 20 year term assurance with additional permanent disability benefit. The benefit provided are on death, whether the life was previously healthy or permanently disabled, a lump sum payment of 150,000 payable immediately. On permanent disability, a lump sum of 75,000 payable immediately. And in the second part, they are asking us to calculate the total expected present value of the benefit. All the forces are constant for all ages and our force of interest is also constant throughout the time period. So till now, the question seems very straightforward. The only thing that you should be concerned about is this permanent disabled. Now, because here we have permanent disability, that just means the transition from the sick state to healthy is not possible. This will not be possible and that will be helping us later on to calculate the expected present value. So we will split this expected present value in three parts. One would be death benefit from healthy state. We have death benefit from permanent disabled and we have expected present value of permanent disabled disability benefit. Now first two part that is expected present value of benefit from healthy state and the last one that is this permanent disability might seem very straightforward. First of all because a person cannot transition from healthy to sick and then back to healthy that is why if a person is healthy that means remained healthy throughout. Similarly here we are using the same. The main problem is going to be here calculating this TPX HS that is the person goes from healthy state to the sick state or the permanent disabled state. Again calculate that TPX HS what we are going to say is there will be a time S that is going to be between 0 and T such that the person was healthy till that time and became sick immediately and after that from that point s to the remaining point or remaining time t 
the person remained sick and because you cannot transition from healthy or sick to back to healthy that is why you can easily write down these formulas now because we have hh bar because we have ss bar these values can be interpreted very easily that it will be e raised to minus of any transition that is going out from that state so from healthy we have sigma as well as mu that is moving out so it will be e raised to minus mu plus sigma t or s whatever it might be that is what we have taken here delta comes from v that is discounting factor now when we are talking about going out from s state that means the t minus s p x plus s this should be x plus s i missed plus s and then ss bar would be e raised to minus all the decrements that are going out of the state there is only one decrement going out that is omega and the time that we are talking about is t minus s so t minus s so i hope this was clear now let's go to the next question this question is april 2019 question number 11 this is a very straightforward simple question not very much difficult they are talking about a share where dividend is 0.4 per share that has just been paid the growth of the dividend is expected to be 5% in the first year 4% in the second year 3% in the uh, years after that and they are saying investor was not entitled to the dividend which has just been paid you have to calculate the maximum price so this was very straightforward you calculate the price you will say 0.4 the first dividend is going to be 5% more than that discounted for one year then 4% more than that discounted for two years and after that you have another 3% 3% and so on so this was very straightforward not a big deal I am interested in the later on part in later on part they have specifically said that on 1st February 2017 a purchaser bought the share at the seven uh, at the price of seven per share and then two years later sold it at 7.5 per share they have given us the inflation index they have given us the dividends that were released at that time we have to calculate the annual real rate of return now, any question that might require a table type of a solution you can use excel to solve them so i have solved this in excel and then pasted here you can copy and then paste the whole table just make sure you're not pasting with links these were just values there were no links that were pasted and to calculate the rate of interest i used goal seek you can use goal seek to solve your question in excel and then copy paste it here let's move to the next question so september 2019 i have chosen question number nine so this is a joint life question you can see that here now we are talking about man age 60 purchases a whole life annuity of twenty thousand per annum payable monthly in arrears with the payment guaranteed for the first five years in addition a revisionary annuity of ten thousand per annum is payable to wife man's wife who is two years younger this revisionary annuity commences on monthly payment date following the man's death or on completion of five years guaranteed period if later the annuity is payable monthly in arrears until the wife's death this is more or less very straightforward the thing that i wanted to point out was people usually miss the expenses in such type of questions so we will divide this into three parts we will have expected present value given to the husband then expected present value given to wife if husband dies within the five years expected present value given to wife if husband survives the first five years i have included benefit as well as expenses 250 was our initial expense this 12 into 10 was also our expenses for such questions or any 
annuity assurance style questions you will have to show certain formulas so make sure that annuity and assurance type formulas are shown here you can write the formula just using the numbers you don't need the symbols but it should be clear what you have solved here do not write very elaborate answers you can just write here this is epv1 epv2 and epv3 you don't need to mention these these were more or less for our understanding but you will have to show a proper formula and the supporting equations that you have used to solve them then of course the final answer let's go to the next question so due to pandemic cm1 examination was cancelled in april 2020 and from september 2020 they have made the examination online because they understand that not everybody is very fast in typing so they have made such kind of questions where they would give you a question you can see we want to elaborate this probability expressed in this format and we have to now mention what is a b c d x p and q state the value you just have to state the value you can see here i've just stated each one of those values although later on we had to solve them because they said calculate this probability based on your answer so we had to solve this anyways and we had to show the working as well you will find that in a paper one or two questions might actually be in this format where you just have to write the values nothing else so those questions you might find from joint life and revisionary annuity chapters as well as in april 2021 you will find similar question was asked in transition state model question and you had to solve you had to calculate the expected present value of the benefit for this policy so you had to solve it as well but in part one you had to just show what is a b m n z that's it you don't have to actually solve there to find those values in part two you had to solve it and write our final answer for the integration style question this step is important they have marks on this step you cannot just solve your integration in a calculator and just write the answer this step intermediate step of what this solution of integration is is going to be important Another similar type of question, you will find it in September 2021, question number 8, where this question was of accumulation and discounting chapter. So, you had delta T given and they were asking you the accumulation factor 0 to T. So, you can see they have labeled here E raised to A plus B T plus C T square. Similarly, E raised to F plus gt plus ht square and we had to find what this a b c f g h will be so they gave you six marks just to write six values of course we had to solve this you will have to solve this on paper you don't have to show this you had to just write what these six values are nothing else in later parts in part 2 3 and 4 you will find what we had to do was just use these equations just use these equations and substitute the values to solve them now, as our examination has become online you will find that they have a lot of questions where they will give a lot of weightage on the comments here this was just one marks but we'll see later three marks five marks for comments are very common nowadays in most of the questions that means overall you might find 15 to 20 marks given just on comments on each question so your understanding of a question understanding of a topic is also very important you need to know not only how to solve it but why we had used that method to solve is going to be important i have divided this video in two parts this is the first part 
and the link for the second part would be left in the description and at the end of this video please check that out too